webinar on validate your product with SolidWorks simulation. So myself, uh, Shamil KU, um, I'm working as an application engineer for simulation solutions. So I have uh, three plus years of experience in conceptual software technology. So I'm into uh, structural uh, CFD as well as plastic simulation too. So uh, basically in today's uh, webinar, uh, we'll be speaking out on how we can validate our product using SOLIDWORKS tool that is uh, within the SOLIDWORKS simulation environment, how we can perform the validation of our product. So basically, uh, simulation driven design in product development, uh, how important it is to implement a simulation driven design in our product development, overview on SOLIDWORKS simulation solution and its benefit. So I'll be also showcasing a complete workflow like how from right from the CAD geometry how we can perform a validation in SOLIDWORKS tool and also I'll be also introducing to the assembly analysis so basically on the uh, interactions part as well as the connectors uh, uh, on the bolts weld connectors spring connectors I'll be also introducing to this concept and I'll be also speaking on value-added technical services uh, as a uh, var, what we provide to the customers. And also we will uh, see on the simulation portfolio what we offer, okay. So coming to uh, simulation driven design in product development. So faster and more cost efficient product development. Since design, design simulation allows mechanical engineers and manufacturers to evaluate performance of the product while it is still in the development stage, a physical prototype is not necessary. The, the simulation may include all sort of digital analysis to Product behavior under various operation conditions and environment everything is done on the computer screen as opposed to the test on the actual object okay so we will be also seeing so simulation as a uh, concept uh, demonstration so used in combination with animation or graphic uh, computer graphic instead of numerical data one step closer to single prototype development stage. In, in the olden days, the only way to evaluate the product performance was to have a physical prototype tested, right? So performance analysis gathered from the first test is as a foundation for the modification for the design. So with the help of uh, simu a virtual simulation, you can avoid uh, or you can uh, reduce the prototype testing and resource optimization and less energy consumption. So it takes much less resource to create a 3D model of your product uh, rather than building the physical uh, prototype. So whatever the CAD geometry you have already created in your using any CAD tool, okay? So that can be uh, analyzed virtually. Reduce cost, improve quality and shortening the time to market for manufacturing goods. So these are the certain uh, important aspects why we have to uh, implement simulation as a driven design in our product development. So coming to uh, SOLIDWORKS simulation. So SOLIDWORKS simulation has a you, uh, various range of uh, capabilities when it uh, talks on the FA FAA analysis. So right from uh, if we have a um, if we have the, uh, if we are planning to develop a product, okay. So we will be having like what are the critical part or how big the deformation is or what happens to my part when a, uh, when under a certain loading condition. How we can verify this or how we can document all those things, right? So all those capabilities uh, in FAA analysis can be analyzed within your same CAD environment. So you just create your CAD model and the same, uh, in the same uh, uh, environment, you can also go for the so, uh, simulation validation. So in the image, you can see uh, we have a, uh, a wide range of application right from basic linear static analysis to the highly nonlinear uh, analysis or it might be uh, vibration part or model analysis sort of thing okay so uh, coming to 
why solid work simulation right so allo used to test your product virtually with real world insight so solid work simulation help us to helps you to ask and answer complex and in, uh, important engineer questions earlier in your process and same thing can be validated with respect to the real world scenario boost product innovation empower the engineering team with the powerful 3d cat uh, 3d simulation tool to compare design scenarios and new ideas to bring innovative product to market decrease development cost so reduce the need for cost of prototyping by integrating virtual test uh, testing earlier in the product development reduce the outsourcing cost by testing by testing performance and functionality internally and improve efficiency so optimize performance by verifying the part and design in the early stage of the development and solid work simulation is a 3d cad integrated analysis tool so solid work simulation offers an easy to use portfolio of analysis tool integrated with the designer solid works 3d cad workflow if your cad designer familiar with solid works now you have the skill to take advantage of fea with solid works simulation capability here you need not to do import or export of your design part rather than you can validate in the same uh, in the same environment of solid works 3d cad itself okay so coming to create a solid works simulation study workflow so i'll be uh, demonstrating a complete workflow so when we talk on the fea part it is basically pre processing uh, Uh, solving and post processing part so when we talk on the pre processing it might be um, creating the material property or assigning the material property to the model and uh, what kind of analysis we are going to perform whether it is a linear static analysis or dynamics analysis or no, highly non linear analysis and and uh, as a prerequisite we are go- we have we need to also simplify our uh, geometry for the simulation so once all this is done we will be also going with the discretization of the model so when i talk on the discretization part i am something meaning uh, the uh, meshing of the part right so any model what we usually have that is something a continuous model so we will be uh, changing into the finite element model with the help of machine so once this is done we will be going for the post processing of the results okay so this complete workflow i'll be uh, showcasing within the solid works uh, environment and how easily you can modify the design and same thing you can rerun the uh, analysis in the simulation so basically before going to the any uh, simulation it is very important to set our objective of running the analysis right why we are going to run the analysis right so basically i'll be taking this example to evaluate the stress build within the component and what is the maximum displacement and also on the factor of safety that is a fos the actual load bearing capacity of the structure component so uh, let me open my solid works environment so so i have a uh, cad model here i have a default configuration built in so this is my solid works uh, cad environment and you can see this is the certain design features which i have used so basically now for the given real world scenario i need to validate this product and i should know whether this product is safe and i would i would like to maintain the factor of safety of 1.2 i i should also see what amount of displacement is happening with respect to the given loading condition right so i'm going to the uh, i have a simulation add in to here or else you can add in from add ins and uh, you will be getting the simulation add in from here the simulation is had in so i'll be going for a new study so all the available uh, Uh, analysis type we have to choose which sort of analysis i am going to run so i am going to uh, 
test one or i would like to name as analysis one so click ok so once i create a simulation study with the within the solidworks environment now you can see that the design tree is uh, split into the two parts the the above part is something on the cad or the cad geometry details and the below is something related to my simulation uh, study tree okay so now to apply the material as a pre-processing stage you can see what material i need to add to this material what are the real world conditions so when i tell on the real world condition i'm some i'm something meaning on where are the boundary condition where it is or where it is restrained and what are the loading condition i need to apply for this model so i'll just right click on this i'll be having apply or edit material so this is same as your uh, uh, material database uh, which is available within the solidworks itself right so i have a, i'm going to apply as a alloy steel okay so just i need to apply so the material is applied you can see there is a right check mark and it is the software is telling me that yes the material property is properly defined so there might be certain scenarios where the material what we are using that might not be in my standard material database right so at that time we have the option for customized material because simulation is something totally depend upon the material behavior so when i talk on the material behavior that is something on the material property so basically if i am running a linear static analysis the important parameter which i need to take care of is something on the young's modulus that is uh, constant stiffness value that is e value as well as the poisson's ratio poisson's ratio is something the ratio of lateral stiffness to the longitudinal stiffness and mass density as well the yield strength so these material properties are going to account for my simulation study right so there might be a uh, cases where these material property or there might be minute change in the values right so even that needs to be captured very properly because that is going to affect your simulation result so easily you can create the custom material also just i have to copy this and you have a custom material folder you can go here you can add a new category and let me tell as custom material and i have to just paste the material which i have copied right so now you can see whatever available here now this is something on the editable format wise right so i can edit all this value so let me tell as poisson's ratio as 0.26 something so once this is that you can go for the applying the material with the whatever value you have given in the custom material right so i am going with the standard material which is available within the solidworks itself so coming to the connection so connections is something when we are uh, using the assemblies right so when we are uh, so i'll be also speaking on this in the coming slides so coming to the fixtures so fixtures are where my models are restricted uh, or restrained uh, in the real world so in my application so i am going to restrain these two cylindrical holes so right click on this feature you have plenty of available options to restrain so fix geometry fix fix so this is fixed okay so you can see the all the three all the three uh, six degrees of freedom is restrained at this location right so i have a pressure uh, load application on this face to apply the pressure load i have to just right click on this external load you can see i can apply the forces torque pressure and the self weight using the gravity and i have prescribed display and lots of options are available within the loading condition itself so i'll be going with the pressure load let me choose this face and let me say as i'm going to change the unit to psi and let me tell the psi to be 1000 right 1500 going with 500 right so once uh, the boundary conditions and the pressure load is applied 
I have to go for the discretization. This is machine. So the machine where uh, used by this solid works, it is completely automated. We have to just give the parameter. There is no need of you manually editing any mesh. So, so the solver has the capability of capturing very complex region with the help of uh, uh, tetrahedral element that is second order tetrahedral element you can see the quality of the mesh can be also choose within the mesh parameter so with the definition i'm going with default value click ok so once i have done the machine will be completed so it is always important to validate my the quality of the mesh because your results are going to completely dependent on how good you are or how good your product is captured after the meshing so this can be also easily checked with the help of create a mesh quality plot so let me plot with the help of aspect ratio so let me tell as floating i am going to change this with meshing so now you can see the quality of the mesh is also available in the aspect ratio so in the mesh right click details and you can also get the detailed report on the mesh also and you can see i do not i have very less percentage of bad quality and that is 0.001 percent that is fine because definitely we are not going to get the 100 percent of good quality element but i have almost 99 percent of good quality element so once i have a good quality of element you can just save this model and you can run this so once the simulation has run right so you will be getting a default plot uh, stresses displacement and strain and you can also go for the additional plots whatever you have required from by right clicking and you have uh, all the options available here so as i told my objective of running this analysis was something to identify the stresses developed within the component and to see the displacement as well as the factor of safety of this model okay so let me see what is my stress within this model so i click so you can see my yield strength of this material stands somewhere at 620 megapascal and i have a slightly higher stresses of 369 at this location you can see at this location I have maximum stress and if i'm going with the displacement uh, so let me change to the floating so i have 0. 0. 0.88 mm of displacement happening with respect to this loading and constraint condition i can also animate this okay so to plot the factor of safety so i as i told i have to maintain a factor of safety minimum factor of safety of 1.2 so to check the factor of safety right click on the results i have a factor of safety plot let me choose based on my first failure principle click ok i'm going to edit this let me keep it in and as i told i can also see wherever the location or the critical area where higher stresses are developed so my factor of safety minimum factor of safety is something 1.2 i have to maintain so wherever less than 1.2 i am going to plot it with the help of black color so let me click ok so now you can see my minimum factor of safety is 0 0.97 that means for this for this given loading and restraint condition definitely this model is going to fail or this model is not capable of having the capacity or of, of 500 psi right and as i told you can see wherever the critical location and see there is a very high stresses or less factor of safety at this location so as a i you you would have seen like how easily you can create a uh, simulation study within the solid works and even a designers who is a who does the design work during the early stage itself if he knows like for what purpose he is going to design this he can validate and he can choose whatever materials or where the design changes has to be done so in this example the software is telling like so there are this is the region where i have very high stress right so what i am going to do let me change let me make a certain small modification and let me rerun this analysis and i will also show how this configuration within the solidworks cat 
can be integrated also with the simulation tool so i will go back to my uh, model so let me copy this and i'm going to create a new configuration okay so let me name this as a modified design so from the previous design i, I understood that model is not safe so i am going for a small modification so i have a small extrude i have i have bit extruded this to small thickness and a small fillet of 5 mm also i have given on my model okay so this is the design change and configuration wise i right click feature configuration you can see uh, this four um, features it is suppressed in my default configuration in the modified design i am having this uh, means i have increased the thickness as well as the i have added certain fillets right so i have created a design now you no need to create again all the steps what we have done you can just go back to the previous analysis right click you have a copy study option so let me tell as modified analysis and here you have a option to configure to use now i am going with modified design so just right click now you can see automatically all your fixtures boundary condition property everything is assigned so the only thing when you get a certain critical in your model so fixtures and loading condition definitely we cannot change because this is something my application wise or for what my model is built the only thing is you can go with a different material property or else you have to go with the design change so once this is done you can directly run this so once the simulation is done so let me see what is my higher stress so now you can see there are higher stress at, again at the same location but you can see it is something below my yield point so previously in the previous design i was getting something uh, towards 600 or 650 now it has drastically reduced to uh, 4 uh, 459 right so displacement wise also you can see it is 0.7 it has reduced from uh, 0.1 mm it has been reduced and i will also cross check my factor of safety and it has improved to 1.4 so from 0.9 to Point point nine to one point four. I was able to improve my design within the SolidWorks. Same thing. So the main benefit of this is something you need not need any uh, expert or an analyst to perform all this basic kind of analysis. Or when you are using a SolidWorks tool, you need not you don't. a expert kind of analysis to validate the things and again go back to the designer for the design change. So the designers itself. can validate their product whenever they are parallelly working with the cad geometry so once this is done and it is also important to communicate whatever the results obtain so in the simulation we have a tool modified design in the simulation i have a tool called report as well so in the report tab you can give whatever designers so let me tell as uh, abc designer name company to be cs tpl and other whatever related uh, information you can fill it just apply and publish so with the help of uh, standard templates whatever we have set right so all the design um, so simulation related things with the help of image also it is going to capture which will help to communicate your design changes or whatever modification what how the model is going to behave in the real world right so let it create a report so once the report is created you can see the automatically the report has been generated so so the content will be available so whatever the properties what we have defined so related to the study properties and unit system what i have used and the materials which you have used basically i told these are the parameter which will which is going to uh, affect your results okay so whatever the constraint and loading condition and whatever the mesh properties i have defined and finally on the results plot uh, you can see how easily you can create a 
simulation report as well and same thing can be send this report for your the review as well right so this is how a even the design engineers can perform is analyze validate their product and take their own decision by wherever the necessary changes has to be made okay so going back to my presentation okay so as i told i was able to uh, see the stresses develop within the company i was able to see what displacement is happening and also i was with the help of design modification i was able to improve my factor of safety right so coming to the next topic so introduction to assembly analysis so when i talk on uh, assembly analysis part so it is something uh, all there are certain interactive interacting parts right so when i talk, uh, when we say assembly there are uh, there will be multiple components and all these components will be have touching each other so these has to be taken into the account or this has to be told to the software like what kind of interactions are happening whether it is completely bonded or whether the mod uh, the it is it is sliding on this with the, uh, it is sliding on each other so all this interaction definition can be also defined with the help of uh, solidworks simulation tool so when i talk on uh, interaction part we can tell whether the component is bonded completely or whether the model is just free from each other or whether it is having a sliding kind of contact okay in the next example i will showcase how this interaction can be given i definitely in assembly we will be having the bolts right so what what uh, bolts we have to use or what is the amount of torque or how much we have to tighten right or whatever the bolt we are using for the analysis whether it is safe or not right all this critical questions comes in the early design or it is very important to choose the right kind of connectors also right so i will just demonstrate how you can uh, see whether which kind of bolt you have to choose or the chosen bolt for your analysis uh, assembly is uh, safe or not right so let me model close so i have a simple uh, lap joint uh, feature here okay so i had a toolbox component i have suppressed it okay so same thing i have to go for the analysis okay let me tell as uh, analysis analysis right so click okay so as you uh, as you can see now it has split it since it is a assembly level now you will be having multiple parts within that uh, part uh, folder right so you can apply if the if the complete assembly is made up of same material you can directly apply from the part or if you want to define the different different material you can go for that also right so in my case both the material are made up of plain carbon steel okay so in the connections now you can see there is a connection folder automatically come up so i am going with the bonded means i am for this example i am not considering the bolt connections here i am directly going with the bonded means whatever these two touching faces are it is completely bonded that means there is no sliding happening it is it is something similar to the single part okay so let let us see how we will uh, what will be the results for this so i am going for the fixed geometry i am going to fix this for applying the load let me let me apply a thousand uh right click forces so let me apply a load in the tensile direction of 1000 newton right so just i have to mesh this so all other parameters remain same only the connection folder is additional for this application right for the assembly analysis so i have to just run the study so once the study is run you can see i have i'll be getting stress plot displacement plot let me see what, how, what amount of displacement is happening here floating so it is something 0.2 displacement right but so this is not the actual scenarios because 
usually we will be bolting here and these two these two uh, so when we are going to have a bonded connection to this entire surface right the model is going to be more stiff right so the real the realistic condition is something these two components are simply placed to fix this we are going with the bolted right so same thing i can incorporate so what i'll do i will create a new study again okay or else you have a option for directly copying this copy this study also so i will go with a new study let me tell as static analysis file so whatever now again the other way of copying is you need not to create everything so material property remains same just you drag and drop to the next study connections it will be there fixtures definitely it is going to be same just you drag and drop the external load you can just drag and drop in the mesh folder also you can just drag and drop this okay so you need not to create again the whatever the reusing definitions right so let me tell this kind of, uh, interaction as a contact so contact means there is a chance of sliding or small displacement with respect to each other right so let me now i am going with the bolts so so here you are not going to use the real bolts what you are doing just you are going to consider that effect into this simulation because compared to this models the bolts the bolt specification will be very small or bolt size will be very small and while meshing those bolts you are going to have more challenges to overcome that we have a option called as virtual connector so if you right click on this you can see i have lots of virtual connector it can, it might be springs so if you have a, any sort of springs in the assembly you can just suppress it you can go with the virtual you have pins bolts bearings spot welds edge weld and many more options so i will be going with a bolt okay so i have to just choose the diameter or the head and net uh, fitting phase and you can change this uh, values whatever the nominal values and for the strength data let me tell as that some 2.5 mm and factor of safety of this bolts need to be 2 mm and the torque of some 32 newton meter of preload torque so basically all this preload uh, related information you will be getting from the bolt manufacturer or the whatever bolts you are going to use right so once you click okay you can see it is not a real bolt it is something a virtual bolt going to take all those information of the real bolt now you can run this analysis by considering this bolt this is not completely bonded it is just uh, it is just kept and we have bolted it so with this application of load whether this bolt is safe or not or uh, i have to go for a, any other bolt you can directly check it so let me run the study it is going to take some time so i since i have bolt connections and this interaction i have defined as a contact so here you will be it will be taking much more time compared to the part level as well as the bonded connections so this uh, the analysis time it also depend upon the mesh size what we are going to use okay so usually we tell uh, usually there is a thought like if we have a very finer elements we are going to get a very more accurate results right but the thing is if you are going with very very finer mesh right it is going to take more time right so it also depend upon the computer resources so when i talk on the computer resources for running the simulation most important thing is the processor wise right what amount of core you are using and what is the available space in that right so now you can see this is something a real world uh, real scenario 
so it is just these two plates are just placed and it right so my as i told we should have a objective for running any analysis right so my objective was to know what displacement is happening as well as whether the bolt whichever i have used whether it is safe or not right so let me see the displacement so get a definition floating fine yes now you can see i have 0.6 mm a 0.6 mm of displacement when compared to the previous result that is bonded it is slightly higher uh, displacement yes definitely will be having a bit more displacement because these two touching surface i am not kept as a bonded it is just place i have bolted right so because of that but this displacement will be causing this bolt to have a shear kind of phenomena so to check that what amount of shear load or axial load is acting on this bolt just right click on the results i have uh, defined pin or bolt check plot just i have to click ok now you can see this bolt the software is telling in the green check mark means based on the strength data what we provided for the bolt for this application this bolt is safe okay you can see need attention zero means if there is any safety precaution the software is going to point out uh, which bolt you need to take attention and what changes you have to make and you can see in this application i have okay so for more details so if you just click on this you can see the counter board uh, counter bore with nut it is okay and calculated fes is more actually 15 uh, 15 is the fos and whatever the in the strength data i have defined minimum two factor of safety i have to maintain so as i told so since the plate is fixed one end and i have pulled in the other end right definitely it is going to have certain values for this basically the shear uh, shear force as well as the axial force to see that you can go for the details now you can see whatever the values acting on this bolt you will be getting here right so this is how you can you can validate or you can evaluate your uh, assembly analysis so there might be one question like usually this is a simple model usually in the assemblies i will have lots of bolt so it is whether it is important to uh, capture all the bolt or give each individual manually no so in this the previous configuration i have a default configuration now you can see i have a toolbox component i have sub unsuppressed this right so if you are using a standard toolbox component for your design right so to do the analysis you have an option also just go for a new study let me tell as analysis analysis test okay so here you can see there is an option called convert toolbox fasteners to bolt connectors right just i need to click this and click okay okay now you will be getting a pop up one simulation bolt connector was successfully created so here i have not created anything manually since you have used the toolbox automatically from the toolbox that specification has taken and that values will be also given here now if i right click on this bolt and here you can override the values also okay you can see whatever the specified bolt the details is automatically captured okay so again as usual you can go ahead with the analysis study okay so this is how easily uh, and any changes say let me tell like if any changes has to be made in this part you go back to your part model or the model tree and make necessary changes you have to just come back to the simulation tool just you have to run that no need of importing again exporting again or the designers who is working in the design field right for any modification even they can validate and they can give the best output to uh, achieve that objective right fine so uh, i'm going back to my ppt so so this is what i have covered so we even we have actually the global contact condition local contact condition so if you have uh, some uh, let me tell some 15 to 20 components in the assembly there is an option of global contact condition where in the one set itself you can define all the interactions and wherever specified interaction has to be done you can go with the local interactions also there is lots of uh, uh, 
very uh, automated kind of uh, tools available within the simulation itself okay so this is something on the interaction and the connector part similarly we have something on the part of uh, weld connector evaluation the assembly analysis right so this is also one major area right so whether whatever the edge weld i am going to use right whether it is safe or not what the thickness or the weld throat what i am using my my weld whether it is need to be checked or whether it is safe or not all this comes into uh, the critical point when you are going with the weld connectors right so even this can be also incorporated within your analysis so let me just show how it can be done uh, i click so for a edge weld so you can see so see these are three different parts okay this is one part you can see the solid body surface body you can see these are the different different parts right so here these all parts are welded together so at this i have a, a single fillet uh, edge weld even here i have a single fillet edge weld here i have a groove weld all right so whatever so what amount of thickness i have to specify right or um, whether the specified thickness is fine to withstand the given loading condition and fixtures right so all this uh, questions can be answered with the help of this validation so what i am going to do let me create a single weld joint just for the demonstration so as usual uh, part specification whatever i'm just copying from the previous okay so as i told this is somewhere i have to give the single uh, fillet uh, weld right so i in the connection i have a edge weld option so here i am going with uh, fillet single sided i have to choose this and phase one set i have to choose this the phase two set basically these two interaction part will be welded when i choose that both i can go with this region now basically at this interaction the welding will be happening and you have estimated weld size also right so uh, let me go with american standard of e60 so electrode properties also you have you can choose from here and if you want to go with some custom kind of property if you go with custom you can able to input the weld strength parameter or else you can go with the standard so e60 the basically weld strength value and uh, other factor of safety will be automated and estimated weld size so estimated weld size so if i am going with some 4 mm thick weld on this location i can go with that okay so once you just click on this you can see in the connectors there is a edge weld located so similarly previously i have already created this study now you can see uh, in the connectors connectors so edge weld specification i have defined here so 4 mm thickness and e60 electrode and whatever the interacting part and i also have two other edge welds for these locations so this location even for this location i have specified 4 mm thick and one groove weld right so i have specified a groove single sided weld for this location right and i the the part is fixed or the restrain at this location and there are certain amount of loading happening on this this part right some the 10000 as well as 15000 in the two different direction so for this given restraint and loading condition whether this model is safe right or one thing is what is the stresses developed within the model as well as whatever the weld we have specified it is safe or not right so for that so already i have run this okay so you can see the stress results how it looks like so to check whether whatever the weld i have specified whether it is safe or not i can just right click here i have defined weld check plot i have to just click on this now you can see similarly like the bolt connectors i have total three weld here right so you can see one attention so needs attention there is a weld one weld so basically the weld which i have specified first so you can see weld connector one need attention so the software itself is calculating the estimated size so what mm 
well you have to give for the application so calculated bed sites for this is something 8 mm i but i have used 4 mm and other two weld right so it is fine even if, even you are going with even some 1.5 mm but uh, the given size was 4 and for the other also it is something 2 mm weld is sufficient to withstand this okay to have more details on this weld you can just keep, go for the details and you can see all the three weld specification will be there so if i choose on the weld connectors you can see in what direction it has to be welded and whatever the weld size you can see uh, maximum it is something eight so you can go with a 5 mm weld also weld throat size is also available here and other related weld strength details is also available here right so this is how you can go with the edge weld specification similarly for a uh, spot weld also similar application i have so basically in the spot weld i have two uh, sheet metal part right so i have to just uh, have a spot weld at this location so similar like the edge weld i have went with the spot weld specification so in the spot weld specification you can see i have selected these two faces and whichever the points so wherever the spot has to be located you have to choose and just you have to define the spot weld diameter that is sufficient right so once that is that you will be getting the results for this so basically spot welds are basically evaluated with the help of animation you can see whether it is tearing or whether these two parts are splitting you can check with the help of uh, animation such kind of thing okay so this is how uh, and there are lots of other connectors like similarly like uh, elastic support or uh, spring connectors bearing connectors what is the stiffness lateral stiffness or, or radial stiffness values can be spe specified and you have more more connectors option so all this thing is something you have to work on the virtual part all the related data so when i'm using something bearing i should know what is the stiffness of the bearing what i need to do you can just exclude that from the analysis all those parameters you have to specify there right so once that is done the software is going to tell right so whether it is displacing more or what amount of stress or whatever the connectors might be bolt connectors or whatever the connectors you have used whether it is safe or not with the help of uh solidworks cad integrated tool within the solidworks in uh, uh, environment itself so most of the ana other analysis tool you see there will be certainly exporting and importing you have to do the cad geomet uh, design somewhere and you have to go for export option and you have to run the re uh, analysis there once you get the results and if you are not if any modification need to be done that has to be communicated back to the design engineer you have to see that analysis report again you have to rerun re redo the design but in this case as a designer itself right the very basic level designer itself now he has uh, he has a capable of doing this fe analysis within the cad integrated software itself right so going back to my ppt so this is how weld connector evaluation is assembly analysis so uh, i have only shown related the weld connectors as well as bolt there are other more uh, connectors available right so so going to the next slide so next as a value added reseller concept share connect so what we provide to our customer so basically to our simulation customers right so simulation so uh, usually we have uh, there is a thought like uh, for simulation there should be an analyst right so who is who is very good knowledgeable person in the fea background right so once uh, you are into this simulation tool so from the technical support part right so from technical support part uh, we will be providing the entire initial standard training to understand the tool capability so basically this training is intended only to understand the capability wise so what can be done in the tool or where are the options available what kind of uh, analysis can be performed so this is something the initial standard training we provide to our customer so once this is done so we will be also providing hands-on training session to simulation champion so uh, we will be identifying one key person from your team so the design uh, engineer itself so we will be giving more advanced kind of uh, 
hands on training to him so basically to adopt this simulation driven design also we will be also helping customers to adopt simulation driven design through customized training so when i talk on customized training this is something related to the pilot project kind of thing so we will be taking a certain simple uh, case scenario kind of thing from your uh, thing and we will be try to set up based on your input what kind of analysis what are the boundary condition and what is the objective you have to meet right so all these inputs we will be taking from you guys and we will be setting up the study on that on that case scenario we will be also providing the training that is something on the customized training part okay and for simulation related queries and support so we have uh, we have a dedicated uh, online support team so for any related uh, issues might be or queries related to simulation will be uh, providing support through online as well as offline kind of thing okay so for all this only if the simulation license is under active subscription okay and if you have a active simulation license uh, under uh, active subscription you will be also uh, uh you will be also getting the uh, learning content access from the my solidworks uni uh, my solidworks uh, website that is my solidworks community so there you will be having lots of simulation learning content right from the basic to the advanced level right so that uh, so when you have the simulation license all you will be getting this right so coming to the last side simulation solution uh, portfolio right so as of now i have only uh, spoken related the structural part right similarly like structural analysis whatever linear static or non linear same within the so same solid work simulation uh, or within the same solid works environment itself we have a tool called solid works flow simulation as well as plastics so basically so, uh, flow uh, the flow related parameters to check right and uh, we, uh, the heat transfer analysis sort of thing right and for the plastics to understand the plastic manufacture whether how much shrinkage is happening or whether it is how much time it is going to uh, fill or pack kind of analysis warpage analysis all this sort of thing you can do within the solid works itself okay these are all the separate license sort of thing and for any advanced very advanced simulation highly explicit kind of analysis we have solution on 3d experience as well as legacy product so 3d experience it is something uh, the platform wise will be providing the roles based on the analysis requirement and there you can perform the analysis this is something a uh, completely collaborated so completely collaborated in the sense the platform will be collaborating with your solid works and within your entire team with the inbuilt plm okay and we do have and this 3d experience simulia this is completely based on the advanced abacus technology and also we do have the perpetual model for the legacy solution that is on abacus eyesight efficef so basically efficef for the um, li uh, life cycle analysis tosco for optimization and explore this is for advanced uh, cfd analysis and cst studio suits basically for low and high frequency electromagnetic applications okay 